devil may cry. All right, now that we have done Dante, it is time for Lucia. D. I don't know. I just, I just don't know, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. And I'm pretty sure the intro is the same. So, Devil May Cry 2, Lucia Must Die Mode. Let's begin. So, Lucia and Devil May Cry 2, Dante Must, or Lucia Must Die. Let's begin. If you guys haven't seen Dante's version, it's okay. You don't really have to watch it. <laughs> but maybe, maybe Devil May Cry 1. The Devil May Cry 1 is a pretty good game. But let's begin. I promise to talk a lot over the cutscenes. In a time long since past, in an age of darkness, when the earth was overrun with demons Mundus. and humans were powerless under their rule, humanity's hope lived in a demon named Sparta, with a spirit unlike any other, and wielding the sword that bore his own name, Sparta eradicated the demons. Called. Till next time, son of Sparta. This is so stupid every single time I see it. So I'm assuming, like. Like, again, she probably did hire him. You know, he's like, you call. And then she just fucks off, man. She just tells you where she's going. I think. I think that's Africa. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. There are a lot of cutscenes unique to both Dante and Lucia, but like this one, a lot of it is... Or a few of them are shared. So instead of starting from the tower like Dante did, uh, we start here, near the house, right? So this is Lucia. I don't really know. You know, I'm just gonna show a bit of the uh, combat, just get it over with. You know, she has like your typical like one, two, three, four. Similar with Dante, she doesn't have the stinger. She has the car wheel front flip instead. You know, she does have a launcher which you can hold, right? Unlike Dante, if you hold the lock on button and attack in the air, she just does a, um, you know, like kick down she doesn't have the combo she has a combo if you attack with an analog in any direction actually no locking on doesn't even matter you can lock on and still do the same thing what the fuck but i have to do this it's complimentary or it's obligatory i don't fucking know so while you're locking on if you press jump she does like a sort of a hoppity dash rather than like a jump Right? And while you're doing this jump, if you attack, you do like the uh, Bruce Lee Phoenix kick shit. So you can, it's pretty cool. But that's while you're locked on. Which is basically jumping while holding R1. So she has that. She does have like the uh, directional attacks, uh, like Dante does. Does she not? There we go. I don't think she has a lot of variations, right? 
Yeah. Wait. Yeah, she only has one variation. It's either this... ...or this. I don't fucking know, man. So, there are no enemies in this beginning section here, but you're supposed to, like in Devil May Cry 1, collect a bunch of red orbs scattered around. You're supposed to have 45 and then open this door here, but I already have enough orbs, so I'm just gonna skip it. The time I would have spent collecting the orbs... I don't know. I used to explain the combat. So, Lucia's... when you play Lucia for the first time, it's kinda cool. Right? You have all these enemies and you just skip them. GG, well played. They try to attempt to do like a like a parallel storyline kind of thing. But my biggest angst with this uh, game is still that there's so many questions. And it's just all over the place. But the attempt, like the idea was there to try something, right? Dante kind of sets up a lot of loose holes and you're hoping that Lucia answers it. She does answer... Some, but not quite enough for you to really get into the game, as I've mentioned in the uh, previous playthrough. Yeah, that's her wall climb. It's so weird. She's like Spider-Man. Like, what the fuck, man? It's so slow. She has three different ranged weapons. Well, as Dante has four, right? She has, like, your, uh, yeah. Or if you do it in the air. It's pretty fast. It's not that bad. The second one is like a shoddy. But it's still not... I, I think it's the worst weapon in the entire game. Like, I tried testing it on uh, bigger enemies, you know, fatter bosses. It's... You're pretty much doing less DPS. You might as well just go for the melee at this point. She does have these little grenades that you shoot out. If you press it without holding a direction, right? You lay it on the ground and it does explode. Each explosion... Uh, triggers the next explosion, so they all explode at the same time if they're close enough. If you're holding a direction, you can chuck it. You can't chuck it in the air, though. But this does good damage. It's supposed to be Dante's equivalent to, uh... Or, sorry, Lucia's equivalent to Dante's rocket launcher with the AoE and shit like that, right? This is probably the ranged weapon that I'll use the most. And out of her melee weapons... I didn't even upgrade these ones. I was like, fuck it, man. It costs so many orbs. I'll just go for... Z Why don't I have this one equipped? What the fuck? The Zambek? On text, this one does the most damage. At least on paper. And this is the only mandatory fight of this mission. However, Lucy actually has a really cool devil trigger, though. She goes whole like she goes like whole anime. She has a feather bang over the other eye, while in regular form it's the other eye, right? That's really cool. You know, she also has this attack as well. Oh man, not enough DT. There's an attack that she has that's really similar to Agni and Rudra's uh, attack in Devil May Cry 3. The one where you stand still and you do multiple flurry of attacks. And the more you press it, the more attacks you do. I'll try to show it in a second here. And as you can see, if you don't kill these guys fast enough, or if you just... I don't know, they just regenerate, right? Full HP if you knock out their limbs and shit like that. You know how Dante's Majin form had the um, special attacks? The AoE that does a massive amount of single burst damage, or the laser, right? Lucia in her Devil Trigger also has that as well. You just press um, melee and range at the same time, and she gets this. Sorry, it's, it's really, like... There we go. Decent damage! Decent damage. It uses like maybe a third or fourth of your DT, max DT. So it's not that bad. These guys just have a lot of HP. <laughs> Dude, look at that damage, man. I'm telling you. She doesn't have- It's still not dead! What the hell? It's like the most annoying enemy in the entire game. Because, like, this is mandatory. But look how much damage that does. This is DMD. Dude. And he is double triggered. 
Lucia doesn't have an AoE or a Kamehameha. She only has one on the ground and one in the air. The one in the air is more like a volley of arrows, like in your typical MMO game with the archer. Oh my god, there's another one over here. I'll show it. You go up in the air? Nope. I think you have to be aerial hearted. I'm not sure. Now, imagine a bigger boss, right? Like the, uh, the butterfly with the larvas. Stupid amount of damage because there's so many hitboxes that you can just trigger. Oh, these guys are really dumb. So, as with Dante's playthrough, I'm gonna try to just finish the levels as fast as possible. Not gonna be showing too much of the combat, so I just wanted to spend a little bit of time in the beginning going over some of her mechanics for those that are interested in playing her. There's one attack that I really want to show. This one. Good damage. It's pretty good damage. What else was there? This one, though. It's very similar to the one she has while in Devil Triggered form, but um, it's just not that good. The spread is too much. Doesn't have good track. And that is mission one. You know, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know why we're going to this tower, but we basically left her village, her house, and now we're here. Let's go. Unlike Dante, though, she only has 13 missions. 13. I like this mission. This mission is a pretty good place to get your S rank with Lucia for those achievement hunters. Oh my god, that's like the second thing in the entire playthrough of Devil May Cry 2. That's actually like a walkthrough, but let's go. So we're going to do aerial hard. Just going to fly up. This is basically a speed run. Watch this shit. Oh my god, dude. I mean, it's not too tedious just doing it manually. But, yeah. This is the kind of part that irks me. Like, flying could have been really cool, but you have to... But, like, there's a sequence here where you have to hit the switch, right? It's just really hard to get the angle. Sometimes you're attacking past it because your aerial attacks have too much of a lunge and horizontal movement. Sometimes it's hard to aim your height because you tap X, you hold X, it doesn't matter. There's like a fixed height that you gain altitude wise. And it's just like descending, uh, rising, hard to control. But the cool thing is like, this is a part where we didn't see Dante play. You know, we didn't climb the clock tower. We started from the clock tower, which I don't know how Dante got there in the first place. You know what I mean? So we're just kind of getting a sense of a parallel story. Which can be good if executed well. Because each story should fill each other's uh, plot holes and shit like that. And I swear, we fought this guy like three or four times, man. I think in the entire series, you fight this guy like three or four times. You know, like, I think Millie is pretty good, but I think this is faster. He missed me with the second hit. Shit, man. <laughs> I almost read his name as the Russian. <laughs> Russian comrade. There's the boss. 
really challenging, man. You know, it's it's such a it's such a different style from Dante. It's hard to adapt to the new mechanics and just optimize her movement. You know, got to get those single frame, iframe frame dodges and shit like that. I have no idea what I'm talking about. This is the first Akana. I'm not really sure what her purpose is. You know what I mean? Arcana spot. Ar Arcana spada. Arcana. Arcana spada. So we go up here, pick it up, and boom. You're supposed to fall down there, and that's the end of the mission. But it's really funny because if you don't do a double jump and then you descend too fast, you don't collect the orbs because you have to wait for the orbs to catch up to you, right? So I only collected two there, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I've collected the third one. It's really funny. I meant to do a double jump, but like... The... It, <laughs> Mom, that's an easy S. I'm fucking DMD. Let's go. Let's rock! I'm Dante! So she picks up the Arcana, and then she goes back home, right, to her Matie. And then Dante shows up, he's like, hey, I'm your history professor, here to pick up your homework. And the house blows up for no reason. We're, I think, meant to believe that Arius is keeping in touch with the characters, and he's, like, trying to sabotage and kill them all, or some shit. It sure took him a while to find this place. Oh, you have arrived, son of Sparta. I just find it so funny, man. You knew him? Granny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you knew him, and then, Don and then I should have been like, Do you, Dante? Looks like it's your lucky day. Wonderful. I am very pleased. It leads to a harbor. If you are successful, I will tell you a story about your father, son of Sparta. About your father? Did you obtain the other Arcanus, my dear? Here is the bastoni. Now we have only one piece remaining. I believe that it is in the ruins. I know. <laughs> She's like crying. I know. I like how. I like how Dante. Oh, I don't want to fight this fucking boss. I like how Dante's like, you knew him? It makes you think maybe Dante knows who he is, right? Like, I know who attacked this place. Do you know him, Granny? And then our, and then the Granny's like, yeah, his name is Arias. He's like this and that and that and that. Like, Dante doesn't even know who he is. Like, it's just it's just weird. Unless he was talking about Sparta. Okay, okay, that makes a lot more sense. When he's like, you knew him? He was talking about his father. Fuck, man. Hey, man, just shut up and play the game. This is my favorite game of all time, man. It's like, okay. I mean, could have made it a little bit more interesting, you know? <laughs> I think when people play this game for the first time, you're gonna be killing every single enemy there is in this game. And that's gonna take you a good extra two hours. 
a normal playthrough with Dante, maybe like two and a half to three, you know? That's probably with killing all the- oh my god, this is annoying. And they all disappear, and I shall be set free. This is the door that would have been locked, right? But Dante has to fight the orangutan, and then we come here. So we're, we're basically chasing Dante right now. It's not so much of a parallel story. It's more like picking up after his shit. And this barricade. Oh my god. This fucking barricade. Without the unlocking button. Oh my god, I would have just pissed myself. Just send out a bomb every now and then just to like knock away the enemies. Clear it away. I think the biggest painful thing about Lucia's playthrough is that she doesn't attack really fast, like range weapon wise. So when you're going for the aerial units, you kind of just have like your typical daggers. Her DT daggers where she sends out like this shit, but where it all kind of aims towards the targets is pretty good. But that's with DT. Dante has the leisure of, you know, pistols, which does good damage with your spamming, but it hurts after a while. So SMG, automatic, right? Shoddy, close range. Yeah, this fight is pretty painful. She doesn't have a Majin form like Dante does, which is unfortunate. But her Devil Trigger alone is pretty good. I'm gonna try the strategy that I couldn't do with Dante. I'm gonna try something. Because the grenades do good damage. It's just hard to know because the tentacles itself doesn't have a health bar. Wow. 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 <laughs> oh my god, Lucia, you dumb fuck, please. There we go. <sighs> There's no time, man. That shit hardly gives you any time. And that does like no damage. Okay. How does that do more damage? That doesn't make any sense. Like I'm doing the cool attack. I guess like because the boss is so thin, you know, it has to be more horizontally deeper or fatter to get hit by more of the uh, projectiles. That's kind of a shame, you know? This is just a painful fight. It's just so painful. Because on other difficulties, you have at least like five to 10 seconds to attack the main head after you take out a tentacle because the f poison of Fonk disappears. DMD, it seems like you only have three seconds. Like, what the fuck, man, seriously? <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is how you play this game, man. It's a fucking pressing square simulator. Millie is irrelevant. See, in that time, after I take out a tentacle, I would have spent that time while it's down, walking towards it. By the time I get one hit in, boom, fogs back up. Let's try this. Not far enough, man. I think it's, uh... I think I need to be higher, because the boss is a little bit elevated, right? I think that's the reason. I seriously think the grenade is the fastest way to go, though. It's 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 it's, it's strong. It's just like it's supposed to be the rocket equivalent, right? It just doesn't have the range. I I don't know if I'm hitting him. There we go. No! I hate that attack because there's literally no warning. Other attacks, other mechanics in like the other games, there's be like a small warning or telegraphed positioning or some shit. That bubble 
It does hit you, I'm pretty sure. I think I lost like 5% of my HP there. There's no warning. <laughs> the tentacles doesn't even have to be down. It's just, it's just, like, the boss just does it because it feels like it. But this is what I mean, like, the Poison Fog 2, it's not that much of a threat. Like, I can just walk up there, you know, take a bunch of hits, and then just... Oh my god, that is... Yo. Wow, that first hit does stupid damage. Holy shit. Holy shit. I'm using an item. Fuck this, man. I don't care. I don't have any items. Fuck, I don't have any items? Dante has all the items, man. <laughs> Lucia doesn't have shit. I didn't farm with her. Oh my god. Ladies and gents, welcome to Devil May Cry 2. It's really weird. Even with Dante on Aerial Heart, when you're doing the, the two-hit sort of boomerang swipe attack in the air, the first one does massive amounts of damage, but the second one on return does, like, nothing. I don't know why. Seems to be the case with Lucia as well. It is losing HP, right? Let's finish it. It's time to finish this! You're going down! Colonel, what do I do? Snake, you need to press the action button, Joe. Huh? I didn't learn this in my training. Is this some new Spec Ops training? I was actually thinking of collecting the green orb there, but the health bar, everything resets with each mission, so. So we're already like one fourth of the way there, you know? Almost one fourth. 13 missions, three, almost one fourth. Dodge flame tubes and navigate through. She's like, yeah, I don't know where I jumped from. I have no fucking idea. We go to like the harbor area and now we're jumping on top of a skyscraper like what the fuck man what the fuck oh my god nope fuck you i don't care just gonna run through <laughs> no <laughs> devil may cry 2 is a game where i think it's okay to use items like there's no such thing as like an honorable playthrough See, I do that close range, does like no- No, actually, this is the weird thing. The boss has too much HP right now, or the, like this guy that's supposed to be a boss. He has too much HP that the game doesn't uh, have enough health bars, mini health bars to calculate it. Look, I just hit him, right? It still doesn't go down because his current health is way past however many bars of different color it has in the game. Imagine Dungeon Fighters Online, if anybody's ever played that game. You know how each boss, on like hardest difficulty and shit, they'll have like maybe 300 bars of health and shit like that. Which is really satisfying when you get like a good combo. But this game, they'll maybe have like 3 or 4. And anything past that, they won't show it. They won't indicate it. So you have no way of calculating damage. Actually, no, wow, there's a difference in color in his health. I have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Look at that. There's like a slight tinty gray. And then there's like a little bit of a greenish teal. I am so dumb. Just wasted all the time getting double triggered. Oh! Uh. <laughs> Seriously? Yo, homie. But this is a weird thing. I think nine times out of ten, he goes for the double hand pound. So you can just easy dodge it. Get a few hits in, dodge it again. Goes for the grab as well. Dodge it. Do it again. The birds are fucking annoying as hell though. I'm gonna take them out real quick. Look at that. That's good damage. Close range. You know how each second I'm regenerating health? The amount of health that I regenerate per tick is the amount of damage the boss does per hit while in double trigger. Even on DMD, you just get stupid armor and damage reduction.
It would have been better if the bosses were leaping around, you know, sort of at times creating distance to do range tanks, forcing you to get close. But um, sort of like the Minotaur, I really like the Minotaur design. You know, you try to stay far away, he'll charge at you. He'll try to pull you in after summoning a bunch of tornading fire pillars, right? You stay close to him, he has like an AoE attack. What? Who came up? Like, okay. In a Festa tank, not a bad idea. But the fight itself, so boring. The first shot is a fucking miss. I'm 99% sure I can just run past. 99% sure. Wait, no. Seriously? Wait, is this the door? And I just realized it's an actual boss this time. It's an actual boss. It's not a... You know... <laughs> it's an actual boss. See? It fucking shoots you through the tank! That shouldn't work! But it does! Oh, this is a good opportunity to test out the, um... The AoE. Here we go. Look at that. Good damage. Basically, just go in the air and, like I said, press the melee and range weapon at the same time. Square and triangle for me. But look how much DT you build with Lucia compared to Dante. I think it's because I'm hitting a boss too. I'm not too sure. But normally when you're hitting bosses and enemies, you don't build this much DT this quickly. Holy fuck, this is what what is wrong with this game? <laughs> that does like nothing. Yeah, the aerial one is much better. Oh yeah, that's pretty good, man. It's really cool too. Really good against the uh, butterfly boss. Spoilers. Come on. Do I not jump over? Is that not what I do? What the fuck? I don't remember. It's a little bit different from Dante. Just a bit. Wait, I thought I could run past. Like, since when do I have to fight all the fucking bosses, man? How is this guy not dying? Oh wow, Lucia, you ho. Wow, you have to kill the fucking minions as well? Are you kidding me? This is like the one true mandatory fight. That's... It's fucking dark as hell. She can't read that shit from here. I can't read that shit from here, man. But she's a demon, man. She's gotta have excellent eyesight. When did they ever establish that, man? She's always covering one eye, and when she goes DT, she covers the other eye. Fucking anime, man.